We're on the subject. I, I said some things in the heat of anger that I, I you don't need have. to apologize. No, no, I, I, I need to because the things I said they were they were childish, and I, I just wanted to retract them. What? <clears throat> well, I never had my nose fixed. I know. How? It was out of character. For me to have done it? No, for you to admit it. <clears throat> I almost forgot what an excellent judge of character you were. Why are you nursing such a girl? Are you asking that seriously? It's rather important to clear the air. Why? You'll understand later. All right. I admit, I left you at an inopportune time, but is that any reason for you to go into a childish sulk? Childish? Childish, you, you turned my life upside down. You ruined my marriage. How did I ruin your marriage? It's, it's fine, there's, there's no need to rehash all of this. In what way did I ruin your marriage? Fine. Why do you think Allison left me? She found out about you and Caitlin. And how do you think that she found out? Why do you think she kept her nose to the scent like some, some Tennessee bloodhound? I don't know. You know, she said that for you to leave, I must have done something absolutely horrendous. Why did she think that? I don't know. She was, she was like completely delusional, totally irrational at the time. It, it made no sense. What did it? She... <laughs> She said that in all the years that you and I had worked together, that, that you'd been in love with me. I was in love with you. Well, you see why I bear you a certain animosity now. No, I don't. At least have the decency to tell me! You were married. You know what a sticklish reform you were. Oh. Kept it hidden very well. Allison knew. Well, I don't know how she could have sensed that. Maybe it was the way I hung on every word you said and started to perspire when you came within two feet of me. Well, I have that effect on many people. <laughs> Anyways, I resent being the last to know. You were the first, Jason. You knew and you enjoyed it. Oh, I can't say I blame you. You had the best of everything. One woman and one man who adored you and devoted their lives to satisfying your every whim. And you reveled in it. Oh, did you come up with this idea all by yourself? No, I went into analysis. <laughs> Why? You're an arrogant, an unfeeling, difficult man, and yet for some ten years I was totally infatuated by you. I'm now married to a nice, sensitive man, and if my relationship was going to work, I had to find out a reason for my relationship with you. Do you really think I'm that unfeeling? Jason, do you know the only time I ever saw you cry was when a pit orchestra shook up? Never in real life. <coughs> tears, 
Tears are simply the appearance of emotion, not emotion itself. So are you saying you could be feeling something, but it's for you to know and everyone else to find out? What other blinding revelations have you had lately? That when I found out about you and Kate Mallory, I was angry because I wanted you to love me. You know, I liked you better before you came out of your shell. It's not easy for me to be here and say these things. Well, it's not easy for me to sit here and listen to it either. Look, is this some part of your, some part of your therapy or something? Partly. Naturally, I wanted to see how I feel when I saw you. And how's that working for you so far? Are you just going to be flip or do you really want an answer? You used to be able to tell. I also wanted to see you for a professional reasons. Have you read Romantic Comedy? How is that? The title of my book. No, I haven't. <coughs> Don't look at me like that. You're acting like I haven't been doing my homework assignments. I just haven't gotten around to it. I thought you'd be interested. No matter. <coughs> I want to adapt it into a play and I want you to collaborate with me on it. Why? There are two reasons. First, I'd like to tell you how I got the idea. It's not absolutely necessary. There's a funny quote from anyway. Ah, oh, yes, he saw always make me laugh. He said that he and a woman had been in love for 40 years, but whenever she was single, he was married, and whenever he was single, she was married. <coughs> he said, they were victims of an unsynchronized passion. That started me thinking about us. I really started the book as therapy. Of course I had to fantasize the relationship to make it more interesting. What I guess I'm saying is, you should write it with me because I stole your character. And this is where you came in 14 years ago. That didn't turn out too bad. Did it? Look, you said there, there are two reasons. The second one should be obvious. You're the best dramatist of this sort of material. Uh, so there's a third reason. Oh. You think that I need the money because my life is in shambles. Yes, well, I'd be less than honest if I were to say that, but that has nothing, very well little to do with my office. It's not your lack of money that worries me, Jason. It's a lack of spirit. God, I am not! Some, some charity case. You never said that. All right. Before. No, I know. You said a lot more. Well, let me say a few things. You walk in here, clutching your toddy bestseller, expecting me to kiss the bottom of your shoes. Guess what? I was writing plays long before you were some teenage ticket taker. And guess what? I'll be writing them long after you're some plump old man making funny speeches about your septic tank to the PTA. Next, your, your, your infantile psychological insights about some, in, into my character and your infatuation with some, some uncaring, insensitive older man. Well, guess what? I'm only, I'm only 10 years older than you, which doesn't exactly make me some aging Caesar to your prepubescent Cleopatra. No, you sit right there. I'm not done yet. I know. You haven't come up with a good exit. Oh my god. Next, next your infatuation with some... Oh god. Your infatuation with my, my, my lack of emotion. How do you expect to know what the hell I feel and don't feel? How do you know that when you left, I wasn't quite bruised? Well, I, you know what? I kept your damn hat for God's sake. How can I forget a caring, sensible, loving best friend who, who used to actually be there for me? Not what you've become. You know what you've become? You've become crisp. You're one of those crisp, overconfident fashion plate fairies who, who think they know the secret of the world. You know what? I wouldn't work with you if you were a combination of, Mo Me of Moliere and Mary Tyler Moore. Yes. At least stand up when I speak to you.
Because since this is the last time that we will ever speak to each other, I need to set something straight. I was not losing myself in Chicago. I was drunk. And when a man, when a real man is drunk, he, he, You've really fallen, haven't you, Jason? That's why I also love you. And see.